Welcome to the vlog. We're in here in fitness culture. We're shooting today. It's gonna be a little behind the scenes Q and A. Um, first things first, getting a little protein in. So we have all of our different programs for fitness culture, lean, swole, and we need pictures for those things. So I got a spray tan. I'm looking about as lean as I've looked in a while. Gonna be jumping in, doing some photos. Got the squad here. We got Katie from up north doing some of our girl stuff. Um, so we do have a bikini in the tone program as well. So she's gonna be doing that. We also got all the culture products out here. We'll take some photos with that. Hobbs is doing what he does best. He's sleeping. Hey dude, get a job. So uh, yeah, we're gonna just do some Q and A. I put out on my Instagram. Just, hey, ask me any kind of questions. I'm gonna answer them truthfully. Let's go. Welcome to the vlog today. Today's gonna be this, a Q&A. Why is it gonna be a Q&A? Because we have been working our butts off filming, shooting, um, and I just didn't make a vlog, but it's all right. At the end of the day, I think Q&As are good. We're doing YouTube three days a week right now. So I put it out on my stories last night to ask me questions, deepest, darkest questions, and I'm just gonna be straight up 100% honest. There was a lot of questions about Morgan and I. I had some tough news last night. Uh, we have a lawyer in Australia that was looking into it and uh, basically let us know that unfortunately the addition of your relationship registration, so we registered our relationship with the Australian government. He says uh, your relationship registration hasn't been enough. We still don't have an approval and I don't expect we will anytime soon. To make a long story short, I can't go there, she can't come here. It's been a little bit over eight months now. Um, we're looking at probably a year and a half. So that is what that is right there. Kind of starting off on a down note, but really again, try to control what you can control. Definitely can't control that. So I try not to sit and dwell about it. Round one, fight. What is your biggest insecurity? Not your feet, lol. <laughs> My biggest insecurity, uh, Josh Winscott asked this. He's a member on our fitness culture program. Um, my biggest insecurity probably is that, um, I don't know as much as I think I do or I let other people down often. My biggest insecurity is that, um, I'm not good enough. I think that that's whether it's, you know, it's competing, you know, you can compare your your weaknesses against everyone else's strengths. It's hard to always feel like you're at the top of your game when you're comparing yourself to everyone. So I have to learn not to compare myself to everyone. Because again, what you do is you compare your, your weaknesses against everyone else's strengths and it's just not fair to yourself. So I always think that I'm not doing enough. That's my biggest weakness is I feel like I need to be doing where did you get those awesome leopard print shorts? Those are a secret. I'll tell you. I'll tell you guys here soon. Love them. I'll, I'll give you all the information soon. Best substitute for hit cardio if no cardio equipment is available. Best substitute for hit cardio is going out and sprinting your ass on a track. Honestly, finding some stairs, finding a track. If it's cold outside, find yourself a pool and do swim sprints. All it takes is you, a track, or a pool, or a set of stairs. Honestly, Go to a hotel and run up some stairs there. Use your body, that's all you need. If you could box one celebrity, who would it be? Chris Hemsworth, just because he's my favorite. Just, you know, he looks like a tough guy. I feel like we have pretty equal in size. So. Funny joke, I'm just throwing it. <laughs> if you had to change your profession, what would you choose? I've been asked this question from time to time, and I honestly think I would choose, I would be a high school coach Let's go, and a PE teacher. My brother's a high school basketball coach and a PE teacher, and I feel like my dad was an athletic director. He was a high school government teacher before he was an athletic director and a basketball coach. Um, I think I would like that. I think I like naturally, I like teaching. I like helping out. I feel like it'd be a great thing. How do you get your body so smooth? Well, I right now currently have, that's not a zit, that is a scrape. I hit myself in the gym the other day. Um, I think, you know, I, I do take a hair, skin, and nails product, um, but I, I think it's also drinking enough water. What NBA team do you support? I don't really have an NBA team I support, to be honest. I haven't watched an NBA game in a while, but I'm gonna say the Jazz. 
I would love to see the Jazz win the NBA championship. How did you start fitness? Well, I got into fitness after I went through a divorce and needed something, so I played college football. I've told this story many times. Uh, played college football and I needed something to keep me engaged, something that I could control, and I decided to do a show. One thing led to another, and I've been doing it ever since. Do you think you have to be a good athlete to be a good bodybuilder? Not at all, um, not at all. I've seen people that are, they look like they would just be freaks of nature, nature is ath athletically, and they're not, but they look great. What is your favorite book ever? I don't know, but Morgan and I, we do this thing where we read um, every night a book together. It's been something that's probably um, kept, us, kept us close. Brady or Jordan for the GOAT? I definitely say Michael Jordan just because it's a sport where there's only five people in your team on the court. You gotta play offense and defense. So I feel like football, obviously more of a team sport. Now don't get me wrong, Tom Brady elevates everyone else he's around and the locker room coaches everyone. Michael Jordan, I think, he's the epitome of a GOAT. Culturally, he changed basketball with his Jordan brand, won NBA championships. No one fascinated the press like Michael Jordan. Have you ever had a binge eating problem, even when it's healthy food? I do, for sure. This is something that I've had issue with, something we talked about on The Biggest Loser. Typically, when you have a binge eating issue, it's if you haven't starved yourself. So for a while, I had a binge eating issue because I was kind of starve myself. I don't know if I'd call it that, but I'd be in constant prep mode, trying to stay really, really lean. That's not always healthy. So my binging kind of came about because I restricted food so much. Other people, a lot of people in The Biggest Loser, their binge eating comes when they have triggers, when they have stresses in their life. So like this stuff with Morgan and I going on, being hurt, if I can't work out, you get depressed, you wanna reach for food, if you've had a rough day, a long day, all these triggers that you have, we have to substitute those things or we have to see those triggers coming on, those red flags that all of a sudden you start feeling anxious, you start feeling certain ways, you need to replace those foods with activities, take a bath, go for a hike, call a friend, watch Netflix, whatever it is to, to get your mind at ease instead of eating your feelings, because a lot of people do that, myself included. How to save the hair thickness. Um, part genetics, again, hair, skin, and nails product. When are you going to ask Morgan Rose to marry you? Um, probably, I'm not gonna tell you. Oh my dude, you just got pranked. Bet you didn't see that one coming, huh? Do you think you would ever write a book? Thoughts cross my mind, don't know if I'm interesting enough. How much do you sleep? Not enough. Uh, do you masturbate? Oh, wouldn't you like to know? Morgan's calling me right now. Hey. hey! Babe, you wouldn't believe some of these questions I'm getting on my Q&A. What is it? Asking about exes, asking if I masturbate, asking how much do you sleep. Um, and, and I told I told YouTube I wasn't gonna skip any of them, so we've talked we've talked about a lot of weird things. Well, babe, just tell them the truth. You don't have to say I masturbate, but you can say I'm in a I'm in a long distance relationship. I'm in a long distance relationship. <laughs> Do you have any regrets in life? Yeah, probably not not asking for a, a part of Gymshark ownership when I signed. <laughs> How are you feeling about life right now? Send us some positive vibes. <laughs> I've sent all of my positive vibes. Uh, I would just say again, control the things you can. If you can't control it, don't worry about. I always say my favorite quote, life try, is- Try not to worry about it. Yeah. Do you feel like you've had your midlife crisis yet? <laughs> no. But once I buy a Harley, what was your first impression of Morgan? First time I met her or the second time I met her? To be honest, I didn't, I didn't, I don't remember her meet, meeting her the first time. Um, she was, we had met like six years, six or seven years ago, seven years ago now. I don't remember that. Uh, but the time I do remember meeting Morgan was at the Gymshark pop-up. And I remember thinking she was very outgoing, had a lot of energy very confident, a little flirtatious, and uh, had the best bum in Australia. How'd you get your golf swing good so quickly? Babe, how'd I get my golf swing good so quickly? Literally just does it every single day, practices at home, practices on the court. Yes, it's true. You love golf more than me at the moment. That's not, that's not true. Are you sure about that? Babe, I have to go, I'm gonna cut it out. Say bye to everyone. Hi guys. 
What's your biggest fear in life? Um, biggest fear in life, probably the COVID will never end. <laughs> biggest fear in life, I think, is you don't live up to your potential. Biggest step to being a fitness influencer, or a Gymshark athlete. I, I never ever thought about being a fitness influencer. Like that wasn't even a word when I started. And to be honest, being a Gymshark athlete was something I turned down the first time. Um, they started making better, cooler products and I loved it. What is the craziest experience you've ever had with a fan follower? I still can't get over it. People will have me sign with a marker um, and then they'll go tattoo it. Three people have done that and it's mind boggling. How's the sex life <laughs> with the separation and all? There's no sex life. <laughs> Every night, my whoop asks me, did you engage in any sexual act activity? And I always have to be like, yeah, no, rub it in, no, rub it in. How do you find your passion? I don't think you find your passion. I think your passion finds you. I think it's one of those things you can't actively search. Like it's a natural thing that happens. When you're passionate about something, you gravitate towards that. Now, that's not to say that you will always be passionate about that thing that you were originally passionate about. And when that happens, you have to decide, okay, am I going to work at this? Is it something that I want to continue? Like lifting weights, I'm not always passionate about it, but I started it because I was extremely passionate about it and I'm still passionate about it, but there's times just like anything in life, you go ups and downs, even in a relationship. Um, Morgan and I, I'm very passionate about my relationship with Morgan, uh, but there's gonna be times in relationships where people, uh, I think, fall in and out of love. And the reason why I'm 36 and I'm, I'm not married yet is because when I went through a divorce at an early age, I never wanted to be in a relationship um, that I wasn't 100% sure of. Morgan and I's relationship is amazing. And um, it's interesting because it seems like everything, all the boxes check, but life circumstances are just getting in the way, if that makes sense. So that's a tough thing. Appreciate you guys. Smash that like button, huh? Why not? Smash it for honesty. Appreciate you. Later.